गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स एंड वेलकम टू अनलॉक विद ब्रैडफर्ड ब्रैडफर्ड इज अ लाइसेंसिंग एजेंसी व्हिच इज 30 ईयर ओल्ड फर्म स्टार्टेड इन न्यूयॉर्क एंड देन इन लंदन एंड नाउ इन इंडिया फॉर लास्ट 13 इयर्स सो दिस इज अ स्पेशल शो व्हिच वी डू एवरी थर्सडे 11:00 वेयर वी टॉक अबाउट लाइसेंसिंग एज इंडस्ट्री हाउ इट इज चेंजिंग हाउ इट इज इवॉल्विंग वी ट्राई टू टॉक अबाउट अ लॉट ऑफ बेस्ट प्रैक्टिसेस व्हिच इज हैपनिंग इन इंडिया ग्लोबली वी टॉक अबाउट अ लॉट ऑफ आईपीज व्हिच आर नाउ वेरी गेटिंग एग्रेसिव द काइंड ऑफ potential licensees the kind of business which we are getting in the market so this is a show which we also present sometimes uh, you know a new opportunities which are available for licensing but today i have a special guest uh, harsh harsh who's uh, obviously a young founder of a uh, and a company called the sold store uh, so it all started with harsh finding a, a problem and this problem was actually anybody who's young and who's growing always wanted to have original merchandise and that's something which actually struck with harsh also because he saw that there was a not only opportunity for him to really get these kind of thing as a fan but more importantly i think this was a significant business opportunity and that's how the business really started now they have 150 top licenses available from disney's to marvels to dc comics harry potter and we were before this uh, webinar started he was talking about the the story about friends how he launched a friend friends is a classic uh, ip and uh, now the kind of response they got was phenomenal and they also run a lot of uh, cricket teams game of throne almost every top license currently they manage so we'll uh, happy to have you harsh on the on the show of unlock uh, brand with bradford you are a very kind of ours and and i would like to start with uh, you know you talking about taking us through your journey of uh, sword store and more importantly your own journey how it really started and uh, and some of the success stories some of the failures some of the uh, areas which you felt was difficult in the market and and at what stage you see licensing at this stage as is the customer evolved to a level where he is looking forward for uh, authorized uh, merchandise coming from these for superheroes or other characters so over to you harsh okay sure so i'll i'll actually quickly go over um, you know why this old so right not just from the business opportunity but what was our idea behind it uh i think the reason we started the soul store right sounds a bit cliche but to be very honest none of us liked our jobs right none of us liked what we were doing um we were always waking up thinking of you know like when to like when can i quit this job when can i do something fun when can i do something that i really like right so i think the one thing all of us had in common was finding that one thing that you really really like doing and going ahead with it um to just take you back a couple of years i've i've done multiple things right in life i have studied science i have studied law um i've done advertisement internships i've done journalism internships um i've done a six month tattooing course as well um the one thing i was very clear through these multiple career changes that i had was that i'm going to keep trying things till i find what i really like and i think that's pretty much what the the spirit or the philosophy of the soul story is as well um where we are very very clear that anyone who's a part of our organization should actually look forward to coming to office on a monday morning right if you're going to be unhappy every monday morning you're not going to give it your best shot so i think that's the that's the kind of philosophy that i have personally always lived by in my life and that's something we try um sticking to every single day at the soul store uh coming to the business side of it right why we actually got into licensing um all four of us were actually pop culture nerds right um between the four of us we like almost all the properties that we have whether it's cartoons star wars um superheroes cricket music comedy etc etc all of us were fans of these things right but we realized that there was a massive massive sort of gap where you either had to pay a huge amount of money to to get one of your relatives from abroad to buy you that t-shirt um or you know you basically find like a a second hand or like a fake product in the indian market where you can't be sure of the product or the quality um there was no one who was kind of fulfilling this gap between a, a good looking product a great design and quality at a price that you can actually afford right and that was the kind of massive gap that we saw that we wanted to fulfill as fans uh back to 2014 about 6 years ago we first got the friends license um it did it it was a wildly successful license for us um we obviously didn't know what to expect right? it is the first license none of us have ever really had any experience in the e-commerce or the apparel space so a lot of mistakes obviously a lot of new learnings for us but i think that coincided with with friends coming back on television again and um, i think we got really really lucky with our timing uh, from then like you mentioned we got one more license one more license one more license and we've now grown to uh, more than 150 national and international licenses um 
yeah i mean so it's is definitely been a great journey for us i think when you obviously started off we didn't know how to go about the whole licensing process but the one thing that we were sure of is that character merchandise or you know pop culture merchandise is is what the idea behind the soul store is and that's always going to be front and center of what our core philosophy as a business is sure so there is a presentation whatsapp you want Or she want to take through the presentation, or Vatsal is. I think Vatsal can. I mean, yeah. I think I've kind of given a, yeah, like Harshi, a brief just, overview, yeah, and yeah, there's some stats, some interesting stats, and a couple of uh, highlights from our journey over the last seven or so years. And this all has been achieved in the kind of reach you've created. Uh, is reached, and your Alexa rating is about thirteen hundred uh, India rank, which is yes. among the top sites in the country, and uh, and. now let's get into i think more on discussion of how this whole business is transforming and where do you see the business really shifting from and how is the last particular 2 to 3 years how the customer has evolved and sure. what is the ask currently and and also talk about a little tg this is a beautiful portfolio they have it's a, almost every leading brands in the world uh, ips in the world they have working with and this is very very diversified and they have been actually both in terms of going conventional and also experimenting a lot of experiments they have done and and we'll come to this piece uh, a little later in terms of what has worked what has not worked and this is a good slide uh, keep it there but sir and let's but first start work last 3 years uh, what has been the the changes you saw in the in the consumer and what is the target groups you have sure <clears throat> so i think if we uh, like i mentioned when we first started off right in about 2013 is when we went live with our organization uh 2014 is when we launched our first license which was friends right uh, we've actually seen a massive sort of evolution not only in the kind of licenses and products that we've put out but also in the consumer behavior uh back in 2013 14 i think there were still very very limited options um uh, as far as licensed products or official licensed products were concerned um over the last couple of years we've seen a lot of brands actually coming up and getting into the licensed uh, merchandise space um it's definitely a very very uh, rapidly evolving space where almost every day or every other day if you scroll through your news feed or you scroll through your social media you will probably see an ad of of some new company uh, selling uh, licensed merchandise right so there has definitely been a massive massive sort of growth over the last couple of years um i think the barrier to entry is is fairly low so you're seeing a lot of new brands stepping in as well and and getting licenses and and putting official merchandise out um i think what is very very important is to understand um, what your brand philosophy is right what your brand ethos is so while we have a very very diverse sort of portfolio of more than 150 licenses we've always made sure that every new product or every new character that we launch on the website should overall go with the theme of our website it should be something that a fan of the soul store wants to see on our website so i think it's very very important for brands who are starting off to understand who their tg is um what kind of philosophy or what kind of vision do they want to build for their brands and do the particular licenses actually fit within that larger sort of um agenda that they do have um as far as we are concerned i think we've definitely seen a massive massive growth personally in the license merchandise space um we've gone aggressively in the last couple of years getting more licenses um i think one of the top sort of things that we've done in the last 3 or 4 years is definitely with ipl teams that's opened up a, a completely new audience for us uh because i think the two biggest things in india are cricket and bollywood and um, these help you not only cut across tier 1 tier 2 tier 3 cities but also demographics and regions um so that's done really really well for us it's is definitely help us acquire a lot of new customers as well um is great for our brand as well to be associated with prestigious teams like mumbai indians chennai super kings uh, kolkata knight riders the kings 11 punjab team and rajasthan royals right so that's been one of the the major highlights from the last couple of years for us and uh, we actually have a couple of big licenses coming up in the next two or three months i really really tempt you to to drop a couple of names but i'll just request you guys to stay patient there's a couple of really really big licenses that you'll see in the next two to three months on the soul store absolutely fabulous journey and i think uh, to even get the whole aggregation of so much of brands and and getting the ips and evolution and my next question is really about how do you really evolve the story about it and what is the criteria for selection of a, a new ip when you're looking to do that 
and 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 give us some kind of uh, failures also because every time it's not success friends was a great success and sure. friends actually classic brand and and somehow it gets very clearly and i've seen the classics have done very well in india sometimes sure. uh, cutting edge uh, and i think which also can signify how mature we are in licensing you know so fundamentally uh, we we still feel that we are we are very uh, classic in in nature so what is what has not worked for you let's talk about that and what is your criteria for when you do the portfolio and uh, selection sure so so couple of things right like i think the most important question is how do you go about deciding whether or not to take a license right um i think now especially in the last 2 to 3 years the licensing space has has boomed significantly um there's a lot of new characters right not just your standard movies and tv shows and sports teams um there are multiple sort of characters and ips available for licensing um sometimes we're even surprised that there are various brands that have actually come to india for for licensing right the first couple of things that we see is one is um are we going to be the minimum guarantee yes or no uh we are very very clear that we do not want to take on a license only for the brand value um it has to make commercial sense for us as well and if we are confident that we can actually beat the mg and do justice to the license only then will we take it um talking about failures right i think one thing that we are very very proud of is that we we've, we've beaten the minimum guarantee for every single of those 150 licenses that we've taken till date so we've never we've never not beaten mg expectations um and i think what what really helps us kind of understand what the customer wants is being fans ourselves um so whether it's a design team it's a marketing team it's a customer care team um everyone basically almost everyone at our organization is in the 21 22 to 30 sort of age range that's about 80 to 90% of our organization right uh, most of these people are familiar with the kind of properties we have most of them are pop culture fans themselves so if it's something as simple as you know you calling the customer care team or you emailing them asking where your order is you will get a personalized reply with probably like say like a superman pun or like a harry potter pun right like small small things like these um but we make sure that when we're hiring people as well right we make sure that the people are familiar with the brand uh, familiar with the kind of licenses that we have and we make sure that everyone is speaking that same pop culture language uh when i talk about how we measure success right in addition to making sure that we can commercially uh, exploit the the license um we also see what kind of brand value it's adding from a marketing point of view so i think one of the reasons we've actually had the kind of success we've had is because most of our licensors right have worked hand in hand with us to also promote the brand um i think this is this is still something that's in a very very nascent stage um where most people see licensing as the licensor giving the brand to a licensee the licensee paying a minimum guarantee or a fee and the licensee obviously exploiting it and making money off it right um the one sort of major piece that's missing or that's that's still not completely developed is licensor support in actually building a brand in india uh this is something that we've successfully explored with wwe with the ipl teams with marvel turner etc um where over a couple of years right we've established the soul store as a brand that has not only commercially successfully exploited their ip we've also projected their brand in the right way we've gone over and above to make sure that there is that sort of sustained demand for merchandise and we've now reached a position where the licensors work with us to actually market the brand and market the soul store so even as a brand it adds a lot of authenticity when a marvel or a disney or a mumbai indian says hey fans go to the soul store to buy official merchandise now so i think that's one of the main sort of reasons we've been able to be successful is the support we've derived from our licensors to push the brands you know very interesting very interesting and let's uh, uh, understand this whole mechanism for a lot of people who joined in would like to understand uh, and you can give a case not by a specific brand but sure. what a lot of people don't understand how to really you know understand and project mgs while you've yes. done a lot of i i can tell you that a lot of people who come to us uh, who are just manufacturers and want to create a line or they are trading on any of the digital platforms uh, they are very confused to how to predict the sales cycle and give us an example of how how you have done successfully and you have come through and i think how do you will create some kind of maths or mathematics you would work on to predict the minimum guarantees and and uh, and how do you really take the the bandwidth of that you know how, what is the range you keep that this is my uh, top side and this is my low side and sure. if you that still do you sell out of the license program yeah sure so i think the first thing like i said is to understand is there a demand or is there a sufficient demand for that specific character or that specific ip on our website right um one thing that we track very very closely as a brand 
is the kind of feedback we get from our customers, whether it's messages on social media, it's comments, it's emails, it's phone calls, right? Because we've now established ourselves as the number one brand for official merchandise in India. Um, in fact, just to give you an example, right? When we do a post for say like Mumbai Indians, for example, you know, buy the official Mumbai Indians jersey or buy the official CSK jersey, we get a lot of fans commenting saying, hey, can you also launch Sunrisers jerseys, right? Or hey, can you also launch RCB jerseys? That's because fans now associate us as a one-stop destination for pop culture merchandise or licensed merchandise. Um, what we track very, very closely is the request coming in for fans. This is something we do on a monthly basis. If we see consistently over three, four, five, six months, there are certain properties or certain characters that fans are asking for, we definitely then go ahead, try finding out who has the license and, and initiate conversations. Um, also, I think because of where we are at as a brand now, almost on a, on a daily or a weekly basis, we do get a lot of inquiries from agencies and brands directly regarding uh, various new IPs they have, uh, because they know that if you want to break into the market in India, you want to introduce a character, um, this also is a pretty safe bet um, to launch your character in India, right? Um, very, very simply put, how do we determine what MGs make sense and, and what our break-even number is? Um, apparel has obviously been front and center of our product line, right? So if I have to put it very, very sort of bluntly or very crudely, um, we look at how many t-shirts can we sell in a day, right? Or how many t-shirts can we sell in a year? Broadly, just to give us an estimate of what our sales would be. Accordingly, what kind of royalty percentage can we work out and what kind of MGs can we work out? Um, yes, there will, there will always be like a plus minus 10, 20%. But two other very important factors are looking at the style guide, right? Understanding what kind of designs are available to us. Is that a limited set of designs or is that a vast set of designs, right? Do we have enough designs for us to continuously launch new things every couple of weeks? Um, we, we function very, very differently from traditional retail, which has collections, right? You'll have a spring collection, a summer collection, an autumn and a winter collection. On our website, every single day, you will find some new design being launched, right? And I think that's one of the reasons people like what we have. Because whenever they come to the website, they will see a new product, they will see a new design, they will see a new style. And there is something new for them to look forward to. So we make sure that the style guide is also something that supports our need to make sure that we launch new designs on a regular basis. And the third, like I said, it's, it's important to understand what the licensor's vision is for the country, right? Um, there would be certain licensors whose, whose sort of, you know, focus would be on getting the maximum number of licenses possible. So they would want to spread as wide as possible. On the other hand, there are certain licenses that would work with very, very limited licenses, but they will then offer those licenses a lot more support and help them grow their business. So it's also important to understand which of the two categories the license falls under and accordingly figure what kind of MGs would make sense. Sure. And I think that's what Bradford really does. Bradford advises our clients in terms of how to plan uh, the program. And a lot of companies don't have really the, the kind of right kind of planning and they fail in licensing. Uh, so a couple of things which are very important one has to do is the lead time for running a program. And I think one has to really know that when you want to really do that, what season you want to target. And sometimes like if you're doing a sports licensing, uh, what time you want to really bring the merchandise back in the market, how you excite that. Second, I think what Harsh said, style guide, how well developed the style guide is, what kind of application you can do that and how can you closely work with the the IP owners to really do some kind of a changes. And sometimes there is a, what I call a little bit of a, not too much, but a little bit of a changes which are required demographic, which means that India might need something, colors which would move better or things of that nature, which needs entirely. There is also an approval process, which is very important because approval process for a good quality license is also sometimes 15 day cycle. And yeah. you are very close to your launch and then 15 days you have to go for approval. And then once approval comes in, then you can put into production, then to this entire thing. So you need to really do this window absolutely right. And that's where a lot of companies I've seen have faltered. They've got great licenses, but the timing was bad. The planning was bad. So they were not able to maximize. Hence, they had to pay MGs and then they drop out for the next season. Good companies like Hirsch company sold store, they have mastered that. That's why every single license is coming to them because they are one on the other one side building a good distribution big distribution for taking the program much more uh, faster and they're becoming more and more obvious choice for people to take official merchandise. On second size, they have actually did a lot of planning and capability. So let's go into futuristic thinking. You know, let's talk about Harsh next two to three years. How do you really see what is going to happen? And is there a change, especially with this uh, made in India kind of a thing, Atam Nirbhar or things of that nature? Is the, is the, customer also moving towards a lot of Indian IPs? Is there a 
possibility like that or they are not cool enough for people to really do that or they are not developed enough sometimes we just say it's not really interesting but i also should say that a lot of indian ip sometimes are not very developed even we struggled at bradford when we started ipl uh, initially apart from the logo we had nothing right so how do we really build those whole programs in a manner so how how this is looking like and how uh, this is changing sure so i think i'll i'll break that up into two parts one is in general where are we headed right for the next couple of years um like i mentioned we're definitely on a massive upward sort of trend as far as licensing in india is concerned and i only see that increasing uh as mentioned the the barrier for entry uh, to start your own website or to start your own merchandise brand is fairly low as of now um so i definitely do see a lot more brands getting into the the licensed merchandise space uh what regarding the indian ips right i think the third point that you mentioned where i think the the biggest gap right now is not the demand for indian ips but the fact that we have not developed it as well right um if you look at a marvel or a dc these guys have been around for the last 70 80 probably more years right they've invested billions of dollars in their comics in in creating the sort of franchise creating the demand you have movies you have uh, you have global partners across hundreds of countries right so you i mean essentially today when i am when i am selling an iron man t-shirt to you i have to spend my money only on creating a great design and marketing it i don't have to spend that money educating you that hey god of here's an iron man t-shirt iron man is a cool superhero right i think disney has already invested billions of dollars and decades of work and effort into making iron man a cool product right, or a cool character for you to buy so i think i think um, it's is very important i think for if we want to create local home grown ips right uh, for us to invest that kind of time um, i think the ipl is a great example like you mentioned where in the first couple of seasons right i think i think merchandise was not really a big selling point i think most people or most teams only sold sold the jerseys that the players were actually wearing right um, but there was no concept of fan merchandise or licensed merchandise um, definitely not at the scale we see today but again the ipl teams over the last 12 to 13 seasons have invested a lot of money in in building that sort of rapport with fans creating that personality creating that voice for their teams and now you have fans um i mean honestly we've seen the we've seen the ipl sales from 2017 when we first started to 2020 um we started with two teams in 2017 kkr and kings 11 uh, this year we have four teams mi csk kkr and rajasthan um in the last 3 and a half 4 years right we've seen more than a 50x jump um in revenue uh, purely because of the amount of efforts the teams are also putting educating fans about merchandise educating fans that this is the place where you buy official merchandise because fake merchandise again is a massive massive problem so i think the only way we can actually create a solid indian ip that's marketable is if you are willing to invest those 5 or 10 years or 15 years of creating that sort of relationship with fans and creating the desire for fans where after 15 years right your fans will just want to buy their product themselves you don't have to educate them after 10 or 15 years but i think that's the biggest sort of gap that i currently see absolutely and i i completely agree with you we've struggled with a lot of uh, bollywood ips we have struggled with bollywood superhero ips because what happens one they don't understand the timing they they're more driven from the movie or the content and they don't really understand how licensing program has to be done and second the whole application of the program is not very well defined it's not the and and that's something which is which is missing and that's why they are not able to maximize even if you look at a uh, brand like krish which came in from uh, rithik uh, had no impact i mean if you really ask you uh, there was hardly any merchandise sold and while True. they they wanted to do that and same thing happened with uh, with a lot, a lot of other movies which came in and uh, salman did a lot of products and they all were not able to connect with the audience now this is nothing to do with with the fan following these stars have or the indian distribution rather if you really see for last 15 years international content has not given got a shelf space in india to sell their content and distribute you mm-hmm. know we talk to pictures we talk to other pictures they don't get a weekend they don't get a weekend because indian movies were so much but otherwise we are not able to do that ipl also was a shame initially because they were not really able to understand now i think that they've understood the thing i think i still feel that that there are under 60 a uh, leagues which have no ability to really create their aspiration they are mm-hmm. popular being popular just doesn't make, make any sense to me because popular uh, can really uh, would not be still aspirational uh, sure. you can be very popular but you people still don't want to wear you they don't want to flaunt in the evening they don't want to uh, show their friends that they have got that and that's a very very uh, a structure and i think another thing which is very important for just for our audience when you do a merchandising planning and or a merchandising structure and you want to take these brands you need sure. to divide 
four categories. One category is what I call the destination product. Like for today, sold store has a destination, which means that any international merchandise, you can come to that. That's very big window they've opened up. Second yes. is they would be good at something which they would have the maximum range or something like that. Say if I was doing superheroes, I would go to them and say, I will find everything possible, right? True. So they address that very clear speciality on that. Third is seasonal. It's very seasonal. IPL is on. Uh, uh, season would really pick up for that. And fourth is impulse. You go there and you like this French t-shirt because it was it was cool and it was just classic and it was you can wear it anytime. So that's kind of a product. So how do you really place this? This is four blocks needs to be done. I'll maybe take one or two more questions and uh, before we end this uh, entire thing. So as a business now, sure. you have actually ventured into a business which is which is a merchandise official merchandise business. What is the future of the company? How the sold store looks like as a value building over the time and what is the future is the, is it going to be a tomorrow a, maybe a physical store coming in for sold store uh, where all the physical touch and feel the quality and everything has to be done or anything which is coming in in your way or you feel that this is the way it needs to be done or how the business which you feel from today where you are is going to be in next three to five years okay um it's a tough question but um i think the two like a couple of major focuses of us right over the next say two to three to five years um, physical stores. So actually, since you mentioned that, we actually have uh, three offline stores in Mumbai itself. Um, we launched our first offline store in fact just last year in May 2019 at Linking Road, Bandra. Um, that was honestly it was a very very big gamble for us because we had been online for about six years by then, six six and a half years. Uh, we were not really sure what to expect from an offline store. Will it work? Will it not work? What kind of rent is the right amount of rent? Do you make money? Do offline stores not make money? We kind of just dived in, not knowing exactly what to expect. Um, luckily for us, again, it did really, really well. It's like the friend's version of our offline store. It did really, really well. It was uh, operationally profitable from the first month itself. So we actually opened a second offline store this Jan at Viviana Mall Thane. Um, that store again has been profitable since, since month one, which is why we now recently opened our third store at Kolaba in August. Um, we actually wanted to open it in, in um, April during the summer months, which are our peak months. Uh, we also wanted to kind of time it with the IPL because that would have been a good sort of boost for us. Um, unfortunately, things obviously kind of didn't go as per plan and we ended up launching it in August. Uh, but for the next couple of years, right, yes, we are aggressively looking to expand our, our retail footprint. Um, similar to licensing, we are very, very clear that our offline stores are not just a branding destination for us, but they also have to be profitable, right? Uh, we do not want to burn money just having billboards across the country that are not making sense. Um, luckily for us, I think the, the one thing that works for us again is when people enter our store, right? The look and feel is of a very, very classy, very, very premium store. And when people then see the price points of the products, right? They're really, really happy because they entered the store thinking it's a much more expensive store. So I think that sweet spot between a great product, a great quality and design and at a price, which is not very, very expensive for customers, right? I think the sort of coming together of these two or three factors is what has really, really helped us. Um, one more big thing that we are looking forward to uh, for the next couple of years is a, is a much stronger focus on women's, uh, specific women's products, right? For the first four or five years, um, we were largely a t-shirt brand. Um, our t-shirts were unisex. So we had one sort of design, one style, one fit for men and women. But almost about 40 to 45% of our website transacting audience is women, right? So in the last six to 12 months, we've, we've put a lot more emphasis on launching a lot more women's products. Um, they've been hugely, hugely successful on our website. Every single time we launch a new women's product or style is almost sold out within the first couple of days. So I definitely see that as a, as a core focus of ours going forward. Um, I also think that there is probably this misconception that, you know, when you see superheroes and you see cricket and you see wrestling and other stuff, um, there is usually that sort of preconceived notion that, okay, this is probably like a guy's brand, right? Or usually guys would be the ones buying these kind of products and these kind of IPs. Um, I think we, we've realized over the last 12 months that that sort of idea is honestly completely wrong. Um, there is a massive, massive market and a massive demand of women who want these kind of products. So I think that is definitely going to be our focus over the next two to three years. And um, like you mentioned, we definitely see ourselves expanding and getting a lot more licenses. Um, whether you're a cricket fan, you're a sports fan, entertainment fan, right? if there is any official merchandise that you want to buy in India, it should be available at the sole store. So that is in one line, what our sort of vision as a company is. No, I, I completely agree. And I like your retail strategy. Not, I think India has a potential to do 30 to 40 stores 
uh, in especially in markets like Hyderabad, Bangalore, Pune, Delhi, Calcutta, maybe Chandigarh, places like that. Very interesting, small stores, not too big, but experiential, where you can do launches, you can do a lot of pop-ups, a lot of activations, and so on and so forth. That's a good strategy uh, to be in. And I, I completely agree that a uh, woman is a big, big TG, and and especially from not only really from designs, but the right cuts and right structure, it can shift into becoming a big fashion label. And they sure. they are much and they're much for faster in fast fashion because fast fashion is something which you are part of and fast fashion is more driven from women than men sure because they they tend to uh, buy a lot but more frequently uh, and uh, and that's where you fit in as a business model uh, so i have a question from mr vivekanand uh, you know this is an obvious question it it worries a lot of people who pay royalties on time and ethical business like yours and and do everything and then they have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, counterfeits available in the market. And uh, how do you deal with that? And how your uh, licensors are supporting you in that? Because that's a very big problem. You're gonna, you say you worked hard and launched a design. Like we'll give you, uh, Bradford did one one product called with H&M, uh, which is a, just a Manuel Monroe uh, face on a white T-shirt. Okay. Now this is, it's just, it's, it's very, it's the classic look. Uh, with Man Mono, that that product sold about a million million pieces. Well, wow. H and M is a big wider distribution that just goes wild, and and then we start seeing that a lot of people are just picking up these T-shirts from roads and markets and things that the designs became popular. How do you really control this situation in, especially in business like yours? Sure. So I think I think counterfeits is definitely the number one sort of problem that we always uh, that we have faced. Uh, the biggest issue, like I said, right, even when we started off, I think this problem was that you either had a very, very expensive original product available or you had like a counterfeit t-shirt for say 200, 250, 300 rupees, right? Um, I think one thing that has really, really helped us beat the counterfeit market, not completely defeated, but definitely sort of hit the counterfeit market is our price point, right? So the, the quality that we offer, the price point we offer, a lot of people who would have normally spent say 250, 300, 350 rupees on a fake t-shirt, are willing to spend that extra 200, 250 rupees for a product that they know is significantly better as far as quality is concerned. So I think the, the Indian consumer, right, is definitely shifting, especially now from a, from a discount driven or a sales driven to a value driven uh, proposition. So if you are able to get a significantly better product for 100, 200 rupees more, you're confident that this product or this t-shirt will last you for the next four or five years. I think a lot more customers are okay spending that 100, 200 rupees extra. Um, secondly, we have, I mean, we do have a system with our licensors where regularly we do send them a list of, you know, like fake links of, of various websites or various sellers on your marketplaces that, that are selling counterfeit products. Uh, but to be very honest, right, I think, I think this is going to be a, a, a long-term sort of problem. Um, I don't see counterfeits going away, but what I definitely do see is, is the Indian customer being able to distinguish between a fake and an original product. And this is where, this is where your licensor support becomes very important, right? Because tomorrow, if I'm a fan of a sports team or, for example, a superhero movie, when the licensor is coming out and saying, you can buy my official merchandise at the soul store, I think that adds a lot more value to the buying customer. So I think, I think making sure that your price point and your product quality add significant value to your customer is probably the only way of beating fake merchandise right now. Sure, sure. Very helpful, very helpful. I think uh, any uh, particular last comments because we're closing the... And then any any last comments which you would like to say for our audience and uh, anything which you want to talk about uh, uh, in your your company yourself or licensing in general? Sure. So I think I mean I think it's a very very exciting space and and if there's anyone who's looking to get into this right, I definitely think this is the right time. Um, it's always a good time. I think again over the last four or five years we've seen social media going up massively. Right. It's a lot easier to target fans. It's a lot easier to to. Uh, to put your point across to kind of promote your products but it's also very very understand very important to understand what kind of expectations you have right like you mentioned do not jump into a brand or do not jump into a license without being very very clear of what kind of ngs you can pay um, i think that's very very important for brands to understand probably start slow um, understand what is working what is not working what kind of price points work what kind of designs work what your customers expectations are and then slowly slowly expand but if you try going very, very aggressively in the start, I think you'll be you'll be in for a couple of surprises. So I think definitely feel the slow and steady is is the way to go. And it's very, very important to to make sure that you are conducting your market research. Uh, before we started off also, right, we had a bunch of designs that we had just made. 
we spend a couple of months just sharing that with our friends asking them to share it with their friends seeing whether they like the products do you like the designs how much would you pay for this t-shirt right i think it's very very important to understand what the demand is before you start uh, adding to the supply so that's probably the the one feedback i'd give everyone who wants to get into this space absolutely great advice and you've done exceptional work and i think you're one of the few companies there are global companies very successful in in this space but uh, uh, seeing a indian home grown company which has taken global licenses and create a big platform i think is a great journey and this is something which we've been trying for last so many years franchise india actually invested in licensing in 2004 and wow. took six years for us uh, to really start seeing some traction now uh, sure. i think the now started coming to evolution and it is always about good players like you who start creating an audience and and start bringing great products and great designs and and it creates a, a great platform for a future trade so thank you very awesome. much her thank you very thanks from uh, the entire team of bradford we really uh, look forward to working with you closely on many other ips coming in definitely thank you very much really awesome thank, thank you so much gaurav thank you thanks for joining us and uh, if you have any questions for us anything which we can do on helping you on your licensing program or you want to know more about it i'll put my email id uh, if you have any questions you can reach me direct and we'll be more than happy to really take up all the questions for you awesome thanks a lot thank thank you thank you see you thanks